Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. That's one of them hard. I know, I know when I done told y'all to turn to a hard verse because you don't jump up real quick with your Bible. When I say something like Matthew or John, you jump up real quick ready, you know, to read. But when I say one of them books like Ecclesiastes, um, it's real tough for you to find it. You got to look in your table of continents like my grandma used to say. Not the table of contents, but the table of continents. And uh, once you find it, I am going to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. I want us to keep praying. I've been getting, I haven't, y'all help me out. I've been getting notifications on the young men that are in the cave. Um, last I got, I heard it was three um, that had gotten out. Uh, let's continue to pray for them. Um, let's continue to lift them up in prayer. Um, and we need to pray for them like they're our own sons. Like they're our own sons trapped in this cave. Um, it's, it's just you know, it's, a, it's just a freak thing that happened. Um, sometimes, you know, things just happen and um, freak kind of accidents happen that you don't plan on. And, um, but they, they got down there in a little initiation. You know, a lot of you, a lot of you guys, y'all, y'all remember growing up doing stupid stuff. And um, it's just by the grace of God that we didn't, we didn't fall into a situation like that. Deacon George probably remember. Remember we went to play baseball at Newberry and jumped off the cliff in the cave. And um, all the white folk was doing it. Me and Deacon George was just looking at him. We ain't jumping off up and down. By the cave, about 50 feet deep. Off, it, we, we went and played base, a baseball game with Coach Stroma um, over in Newberry. And it rained out. And since it rained out, Coach Stroma was like, hey, everybody, let's go do something. And uh, we got in the bus, and we went riding through a cow field. Didn't even know where we was going, brother child. We went riding through a cow field. I'm like, what are we doing? Where are we going? I mean, you got so far, we couldn't even see the road anymore. And then he told everybody, take your clothes off. What? <laughs> take everything off but your underwear. I was like, what kind of baseball team is this? Well, he, we pulled up and I couldn't even, we couldn't even tell because there was a big tree hanging over it. It was a big sinkhole. I promise you, it, it was at least 50, 60 feet deep uh, to the water. And then, and then probably another 80, 90 feet deep under that. And it was a cave under there. And uh, because I love me so much, I didn't jump. Yeah, and they, they, they jumped off and then you had to climb up the rocks to get out. And did you jump? I didn't jump. I didn't jump. I didn't jump. I said, no, now unto him who's able to keep me from falling. Jesus said, lo, I be with you always. Not down under the ground, I be with you always. So, uh, but who knows? You know, who knows? You know, something like that we could have participated in. Who knows what could have happened? Uh, just crazy stuff. You know, many of, us, many of you have done just crazy things growing up. And God preserved you. And God kept you. And God blessed you. And you're not, you're not dead. You're alive. But um, these young men, they've, they've fallen into a situation. And let's pray for them. I've been following this thing like crazy. I've been following it like crazy. And uh, so my heart is really attached to these young boys, um, this soccer team. So let's keep them in our prayers. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. In verse 9 through verse 12. I, I'm not going to keep you long. I'll, I'll keep this as short as I can. Get you out of here so you can see part two of power on the night. And then, um, and then uh, <laughs> I get you home and so you can check out and see if Dre's going to die tonight. All right. Um, four verses we'll look at. Uh, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. We'll read this out loud in concert. Uh, we're continuing our series on Relationships 101, so you have picked a great day to be here on today. All right, let's read these verses out loud in concert. Let's read. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, 
two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Amen. So, um, you probably already seen it, but we'll continue our topic on Relationships 101. But I want to talk to y'all specifically on today about the value of friendships. The value of friendships. Look at your neighbor and say, the value of friendships. Now look at somebody else and say, there's value in friends. There's value in friends. And I want y'all to get that. So with that being said, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you this day. We give you glory. We give you praise for your goodness and for your grace and for your love. God, we pray for these young men that's left in this cave. Fathers are crying. Mothers are crying. Family members are crying. Communities are are at wit's end, not knowing if they're going to see their young babies again. But we know that God, that you're not only the God above the earth, but you're the God under the earth. And God, even you can go into this cave and give these young men safe arrival back to their families. And we, even though we're way over here in America, we pray that you send your angels all the way over across the continents, across the waters, God, and touch and caress and grab and hold these young men in the palms of your hand. Bring them home safely. Do it, we pray, God. And God, we pray today as your word comes forth, speak to us as only you can. Give us an ear to hear. Give us a heart to receive. We come against every demonic distraction. We come against everything that will hinder us from hearing you. We thank you for what you're doing and for what you're going to do. And we bless you. And it's in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus we do pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. So this morning or almost afternoon, I want to talk to y'all about why it is absolutely essential that we learn about the value of friendships. Now, a lot of you, I think, um, we, we have a fill-in sheet. If you didn't get a fill-in sheet, our ushers can get one to you if you raise your hand. Uh, we have a fill-in sheet um, so that you'll be able to follow along with us and because I wanted, to make I wanted to make sure that this is information that you guys will be able to follow along with and that you'll be able to retain in your eyes and your hearts. Thank you, Sister Mary. Thank you so much. Um, We've got a couple over there that need them, Brother Thomas. Thank you so much. But I want you to know that friends are so important. Everybody say friends are important. Say it again. Say friends are important. Now, there were a few prophets a few years ago while I was growing up that shared about the importance of friends, and their name was Houdini. They had a song that said, friends. How many of us have them? Friends, one we can depend on. Friends, how many of us have them? Friends, before we go any further, let's be friends. Y'all remember that? Oh, how about this? One of my favorite shows uh, that made me just look forward to growing older and to growing old was The Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Do -do 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 and if I do a party, invite everyone you knew. And it would be the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. Dun, 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 dun. How many of y'all like Golden Girls off up in here? Man, it wasn't nothing like a show like that. How about this one? Cheers. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Dum, 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 dum. And they're always glad you came. Dum, dum, dum. You want to be where you can see. Our troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Da -da 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 -dum, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> see, we don't know about that kind of stuff today. You know, we got ratchet kind of stuff on TV, and we got stuff where everybody pulling out weave and fighting each other and knocking out teeth. You know, we don't have genuine, loving, just friendly shows. 
I was going to sing the, the, the anthem to the show Friends, but I've never seen that a day in my life. So, um, But there's shows like that that really just does something for us. I want to give you all, though, we're talking about the importance of friends. I first of all want to tell you about the seven types of relationships that every person should be involved in or every person is connected to in some type of way. First of all, it's relationship number one is Jesus Christ. That is the most important relationship in your life. Okay? Jesus Christ. If you don't know him today, you need to get to know him. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. All relationships in your life flow from this one important relationship, Jesus Christ. The second relationship is marriage. Everybody say marriage. God created marriage as, as, most, as the most intimate of human relationships. It's first of all God's fix for aloneness. Genesis 2 and 18 tells us says that God, he, he didn't desire, didn't see that it was good or fit for man to be alone. And then also secondly, marriage is given as a helper, as a um, helper to a mate and to help to protect and to help one another. Um, some, of, some of us married folk, we know we wouldn't be able to make it without our spouses. I know I wouldn't be able to make it without my spouse. And then the third relationship is family. Everybody say family. There's a lot of people, of course, that's not here today. Family reunions are going on, and people are um, having family reunions and gatherings. Uh, we got our family reunion this upcoming um, week in Orlando with our um, family, the George family reunion. Uh, family is important. Um, family is vitally important. Um, through marriage, we see children come from marriage as a building block of our society. Um, we're called to look after and to care for one another. Family is really important. And then also, which I'm going to talk about today, is friends. Deacon George, can you help me out? Can you do, um, I need you to help me out real quick. On that stand is um, a charger, um, a, a charger for um, this right here, for um, my laptop. I need a charger for it. Dial me. So, Friends is relationship number four, all right? And then number five is mentors. Everybody say mentors. Mentors are very, very important, very important. Um, a mentor is defined as a wise and trusted counselor or teacher. Um, Moses, men, Moses was mentored by his father-in-law, Jethro. Eli prepared Samuel for the tasks and responsibilities that he was engaged in. Um, Jesus mentored his disciples. Um, and then also Barnabas and Paul excelled in mentoring. I want to admonish, especially in the days that we live in, in the fatherless generation, fatherless times that we live in, it is now more than ever more important for people to have things called mentors, people that can guide you, people that can help you, people that can assist you, people that can give you, um, a, a, be a guide to you in, in your life, and people that can assist you in your life. It is vitally important that you have mentors to help you to be what God wants you to be. Uh, in, in, in all arenas of life, we need a mentor. Spiritually, you need mentors. If you're into sports, you need mentors. If you're into business, you need mentors. Um, no matter what area you're in, you need somebody who's already did it, done it, and got the T-shirt and been there and came back and has been successful in that area. Anybody hearing what I'm saying? It's just like in, it's just like in marriage. If you, if you expect to have a good marriage, the last thing you want to do is to have somebody mentoring you that's got a jacked up marriage. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. The worst thing to do is to have somebody giving you advice who's not following their own advice. So we need mentors. Relationship number six is neighbors. Neighbors and strangers. Neighbors and strangers. These are people you run into. These are people you see at the mall. These are people that live beside you. Uh, your neighbors. Um, people you run into in the grocery store. Those are strangers. People you might not know. I want to admonish you. If you live in a neighborhood, you live amongst people, you should get to know your neighbors. You should get to know your neighbors. You should know who you live around, who you live amongst, who you live beside. Ain't no telling who you might be living by and not even know it. Um, I remember um, a few years ago, we didn't even know it, um, we lived by a bank robber in our neighborhood. 
Um, we didn't even know it. And um, this guy, uh, just a few days before he had robbed the bank, he was behind the house. He was playing with a crack pipe, and it caught on fire. It, and, and we had to call the fire department. It got all up in the trees. It was heading towards my mom's them house. And then you, you know how crackheads are. They come out there. They see the fire. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. I don't know. And, you know, and, and the police came. They found the crack pipe. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I made a mistake. No, that, uh, no, brother. You about killed some people doing that. And uh, we got to know him and then found out, of, of course, just a few days later, he went and held up a, a bank over in Lake City, and now he's doing 15 to 20 years. You need to know who you live beside. You need to know who's around you. You need to know who you're next door to. You might not know who you're beside. And so our neighbors, and then all also, relationship number seven, which is a vitally important one, is your enemies. You could put enemies, you could put haters, either one, but they're also a vital part of your life. Everybody has enemies. Everybody. Well, let me put it like this. Everybody who looks to be successful and look to do anything in life will at some point face enemies. Your enemies got enemies. Everybody has enemies, and you, that's something you have to understand. You know, you might not even understand. You might be somebody's enemy. You know, sometimes people fail to realize that in, in relationships that go wrong, that they are probably 50% of the problem, that you probably was just as wrong in the situation as the other person. Everybody has enemies, though. Everybody have enemies and haters that they have to deal with. But the great thing about enemies is that David said this in Psalms 23. He said that he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh, this is a bad church today. I'm going to preach this all by myself. I hope y'all with me today. I woke up this morning. I'm fired up. I was watching the World Cup on yesterday, and I just feel like kicking the devil in the head. I hope y'all with me today. Tell your neighbor, we're going to talk about friends. So let's get into this. Let's get into this. Now, the writer of Ecclesiastes wants us to understand that friendships is an investment. Matter of fact, it's a good investment. Now, when the author says in verse 9 that two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor, the words good reward can also be um, translated as good return. The very best investment you will ever make in life will not be in a financial one, but rather the investment made in relationships. Because one thing you must understand is that everything in the kingdom of God flows through relationships. I want y'all to say that with me. Say, everything in the kingdom of God flows through relationships. Let me help you out with this. I can give you proof. I, I guarantee you every major blessing you've ever experienced in your life, you've experienced it because you was connected to somebody. Every, every blessing, God never blesses anybody by giving them a blessing directly from him to anybody. He always blesses you through somebody else. Some of the jobs you got simply was because you was at the right place at the right time, you knew the right person, you was connected to the right people, and you got something that because God set you up in the right relationships that you probably wouldn't have got on your own. Relationships are so important. Healing comes through relationships. Relationships with doctors and relationships with nurses and relationships with pharmacists and relationships with people that has wisdom and knowledge. Breakthroughs come through relationships and all of these other different things. And if you never understand that, you might find yourself missing out on many rewards and blessings if you don't understand that everything in the kingdom flows through relationships. Everything. We... Um, even as a church, we experience what we've experienced in so many different areas in this church because of the people we're connected to, um, because of the people we're connected to in our community, people we're connected to in our environment. Um, we got the loan on this building because I was connected to Pastor Jarvis, who was pastor of Anchor Christian Fellowship at the time, and we done went to nine different banks and then, then got turned down, and Pastor Jarvis came, and he was working on our AC one day, and he was asking me, when are we going to build a new building? I was telling him, we're working on it. We got the plans 
loans and all that. And I said, but we've been turned down by nine different banks. And he said to me, he said, let me give you, get, let me run out to the van and give you a number of a banker that I know that can give you a loan in no time. Well, I took the lady's number. I was scared to call it. I was kind of down about calling it because, you know, after you've been rejected so often, you know, you look to be rejected again. But the Holy Ghost said, go ahead and give the lady a call. I called her, didn't she didn't answer. It was, it was beyond business hours. Left a message, told her what we was trying to do. She, that was on a Friday. She called me back on Monday morning and said, come in the office. Let's set something up. Let's make a deal, and let's do what God wants you guys to do there at Victory Christian Center. How many of y'all know it's through relationships that God blesses us? And you've got to understand that. It's a great investment. So I want to give you some things that you can jot down and that you can follow along with me on today. The first thing you need to understand about friends is that friends helps you when you're down. Friends, a friend helps you when you're down. Verse 10 says, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. I heard a person, I heard a wise person say once before, they said a homeless man isn't necessarily a man who's run out of money, but he's a man who's run out of friends. Because if you're really my friend, you won't let me go homeless. Salah. Now, you, you may have a lot of people in your life that you call acquaintances, acquaintances, but you may only have a very few that you can call real friends. Now, let me help y'all out with something. All them people you got on Facebook, all of them ain't your friends. You want to know how I know? A lot of them will talk to you online, but they won't talk to you in person. That, that just trips me out. You know, I see the person in real life. You know, and they'll, instant, they'll inbox you, they'll message you. But when you see them in, in real life, like, they don't even talk to you. I'm like, okay, this is funny. I thought you sent me a friend request and I accepted it and I thought we friends. That is, social media is such a frivolous way of people thinking they have a real relationship with you. I have people all the time, they tell me, I know you. We're friends on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I said, you don't know me. You don't know, you, don't, you can't just know somebody by a post because how many of y'all know people can make themselves who they want to be by a post? They'll post their best picture, their best smile. You know, there's editing stuff now. You can squish, you can squish all that in. You can do all that. You can, you can bleach your face. You can do all kind of stuff. People ain't their real self on, on, on social media. You know, that, that's not how you build real relationships. Real relationships is when we talk to each other, and I smell your bad breath. I see them wrinkles in your eyes. You know, I see, that, I see the morning boogers on the crust of your eyes. You know, and we talk, and we spend time with each other, and you poot, and you tell me, excuse me, and you try to blame it on somebody else. You know, you, you got to be around people to have a relationship with them. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You don't get to know people through social media. And don't be bragging, man. I got all these friends on Facebook. Let me tell you something. You'll know they're your real friend if you're about to die on your deathbed. That's how you'll know who your real friends are. You'll know who your real friends are when you get down. You'll know who your real friends are when you're broke, when you're busted and disgusted, and you can't find your way out. That's how you know who your real friends are. But a real friend will help you when you're down. Just get in trouble. Just get in trouble. The people that are still around are your real friends. And there, and there may not be as many left as what you would have thought. Let me give you the next one because we're going to get into some stuff. We're going somewhere today. A friend is someone who will fight to protect you or your reputation. A friend will fight to protect you or your reputation. In other words, they will not allow other people to talk bad about you in their absence. Or in your absence. They will not allow somebody to talk bad. I'm, oh, I'm preaching good this morning. They will not allow somebody else in, in your absence talk bad about They'll be like, wait a minute now, wait a minute. We was good talking about Sarah and Jesse, but wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to change this now. Me and him go way back. 
I know they jacked up. I know they got issues. I know they got some drama in their life, you know, but wait a minute. We done went too far. They'll fight to protect you or your reputation. They'll, help, they'll, they'll speak up for you in your absence. A friend is someone who will fight to protect you or your reputation. And then here's the next thing. A friend is committed to helping you to grow spiritually. A real friend is committed to helping you to grow spiritually. Oh, we're going somewhere today. Real friends bring spiritual focus to your life. You want to know, you want to know, let me, let me tell you something, and, and this, is going, this is good, and this is, this, I'm speaking prophetically today. If you want to know the difference between if God sent somebody into your life and if the devil sent somebody into your life, is that if God sends somebody into your life, they bring spiritual focus to your life. But if the devil sends somebody to your life, they send all type of confusion to your life. You, your life is more confused, more jacked up. You got more drama now because you're connected to them. That's what happens when the enemy sends somebody into your life. But, but when God sends somebody into your life, they bring spiritual focus. They bring spiritual discernment. They bring spiritual clarity in your life. That's somebody that God brings into your life. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen this morning. It's okay. You need friends. Let me help you out with let me help y'all out with something. Young people, older people. You need friends that will cause you to feel spiritually uncomfortable around them. Oh, y'all ain't get it. I want to say that again. I might have to say it about three times. You need people in your life, young people, high schoolers, get this. Middle schoolers, all of you. Adults, you need people in your life that causes you to feel spiritually uncomfortable around them. In other words, when you get around them, you feel like they might prophesy something to you about, the, about you that you don't want nobody to know. You, you, you feel like God is giving them something about you and you feel uncomfortable around them. Those are the people often that people run away from, but those are the people you need to hang around and be around people that bring spiritual focus and spiritual clarity in your life. Those are the kind of people you need to be around, people that, that talk about the word and talk about the Bible and talk about the latest gospel song and talk about a dream they had from God and talk about a time they had in church and what they heard in Sunday school and what they heard on the word network. Those are the kind of people, I'm waking y'all up, that's good. Those are the kind of people you need to be around oh we're gonna preach today I, I'm telling y'all I got I, something happened to me this week and y'all hope y'all praying for me something happened to me I don't know what happened I hope y'all really grasp what what was going on I, I want you to understand you need people that bring spiritual focus to your life if I hang around you for five days and you never said nothing about Jesus you are not saved How is it, how is it that your best friend, your best friend has no relationship with God and you call yourself a bona fide believer? Well, I'm just trying to witness to him. I'm just trying to just give your best friend? It's sent by the enemy because it's easy to pull somebody down and it is, it is for, somebody, for somebody to pull somebody up. Oh, but I want the will of God in my life. I want to do what God wants me to do. And, I'm, and I just want to become all God wants me to come. Maybe a part of the first step is, is going through your phone and finding out who are the people that bring spiritual focus in your life and who are the people that bring the most confusion. Because a real friend will challenge you. A real friend will challenge you as a man to be the priest of your home. A real friend will challenge you as a woman to be the woman that God has called you to be. A real friend will ch challenge you as a child of God to be what God has called you to be. I don't want friends. I don't want friends that pull me back to a place of hell that I came running and screaming out of. Oh, I'm going to preach. I got, about a, I got a few other points that we're going to get into. 
But those are the kind of people you need. Let, let me tell you something. And that's why, thank you, Holy Spirit, you got to watch out for these people that always are constantly trying to pull you back. Now, I don't know about y'all, I'm allergic to that word back, and, and, and I'm allergic to people that, 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 that come up to, because you remember what it was like 15, 20, 30 years ago and what we used to do. Let me tell y'all something. When I hear people talking like that, I run like they got the blue bonnet plague, man. Because let me tell y'all something. When I got saved, I did everything I can to get from back. I did everything I can to get from Egypt, and I don't want any kind of recollection of you pulling me back. I'm allergic to that. That's why there's some atmospheres and some gatherings and some, 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 some circles I just can't continually hang out in. I come and, you know, have small talk with you. Wait, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, hey, I, hey, what, LeBron going to the Lakers? Hey, that's good, man. All right, cool. Kyrie Irving, he's staying in Boston. Yeah, all right, man, I got to go, man. I got to go. I see y'all later. I got to go, man. All right, peace out. Because I don't want to continue to hang around an environment that will pull me back. You want to you want to know you want to know the number one reason the number one reason why people who get hooked up on habits and get hooked up on all kind of things the number one reason why they go back into that life that they're in is because they hang around people that is continually stuck on back Do y'all not know the number one issue when it comes to deliverance and living a delivered life is the people you run with People that's on drugs, I guarantee you, 99% of the time, if they just change their running partners, and people that's on, on, on different things, if you it, it could be drug, it could be lust, it could be fornicating, sleeping around. Oh, I'm gonna make the devil mad. I'm gonna say stuff we ain't heard in church in a long time. If we get away from the circles and the people that we're hanging around and the people we're tied to, we can get a delivered life. You need people that will help you to grow spiritually. You, you go out to eat, you ask them to pray. They can't even pray over the food. <laughs> Glory. They use every excuse they can of not going to church and not being in the house of God. Oh, but I went to see Uncle Drew. Girl, you saw power last night. Girl, I, I, man, empire, man. I'm so sad that scandal is gone off, off the network. I'm so sad. Uh, girl, you going to church. I ain't got no time for that. Preacher, man, y'all saying amen. You need people that pulls you into something to grow more spiritually. I want to give you something. I've done this before. The mathematics of relationships. I need four people to help me real quick. Four people to come up on the stage help me real quick. I ain't going to ask you to say nothing. I ain't going to ask you to do anything. I just need you to hold something for me. Four people. Four people. Four people. Come up all the way up on the stage. Come, st come stand right here. All right. Come on, Brother Char. Y'all stand right here in the middle. Four people. Four people. This is the mathematics of relationships. So, so, so y'all don't know I'm playing favorites. I'm giving my wife and brother Clarence the worst ones. All right. This is the mathematics of relationships. Everybody you run into, they represent one of these mathematical equations. Everybody you run into. In math, there's, there's basically four binary um, mathematical components. There's addition, there's division, there's subtraction, there's multiplication. Everybody you run into, they represent one of these components. Either they will add to you, they will divide you, they will subtract from you, or they will multiply your life. Now, y'all two step back. Y'all two step back. Y'all two step forward a little bit. These two right here are the two people you want in your life. Okay, y'all hear what I'm saying? These two people. 
you want, you want people like Desmond, you want people like Charles, you want people that's going to add to you and people that's going to multiply your life. Now, here's the problem. A lot of times, and th this is good, it, th this would be real good for, for somebody using a speech or something somewhere. This would be a good illustration for y'all to use. Let me, take, let me help you out. A lot of times, we don't find out people have these certain components until we done spent some time with them. Because when you look at people sometimes, they can look like an addition, but after you done spent a few months with them, you find out they're a subtraction. I mean, they look real good. You know, it, it looked like they got a lot of stuff. It looked like they got a lot going on in their life. But then you find out, you know, they've been living with their mama for 55 years. Okay, I mean, they look real good. I mean, you, you, you find out, you know, they look real good. I mean, they, they dress nice. They got new shoes. They got the latest Jordans on. They got the latest Adidas. They got the latest red bottom shoes. They got all of this stuff going on. But then you find out all of this other stuff that's going on in their life. And you're like, my God, they're more of a subtraction than they are addition. Same thing with the multiplication. A lot of times you, it looked like somebody will multiply you, and, but when you hook up with them, you're more confused than what you was after you met them. I mean, it's like your life is worse now that you done connected with this person. Because a lot of times it's not until we done spent time with these people. Y'all two step back. Y'all two step up. And then, so, and then so a lot of times, though, what happens is, see, I love math, but I, I hated subtraction and division. I just hated it. I just hated it. I mean, I mean that whole division thing. My God! I mean, when you when you had to draw that house, you know, the thing, the numbers under the house, and then you know every. It seemed like, I don't know about y'all. It seemed like every one of my teachers they had a different way of figuring it out. And then I got confused by them. I was like, wait a minute, my tenth grade teacher said do it like this. My my ninth grade teacher had this whole theory of how to do it. You know, I just, I just hated division. I, I hated subtraction. I just hated it. It just wasn't something that I was, you know, attracted to. But 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 what happens is a lot of times is that we meet people and then we get connected to them and you know they just divide us, man. They'll get you turned against some people that that'll be a blessing to your life. Let me help y'all out with something. I've seen people. I've seen people connected to a good church and then they allow somebody to come in and talk them out of being connected to a good church because they had a bad experience with somebody that's not even connected to that church that just sits in the church that makes them think they're part of the church. And they're like, that, that whole church is bad. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, I was, I was, I, I, I was with Junebug. Junebug was acting like this and this, that, and the other. Junebug ain't even part of the church. They just come on Christmas and Easter. And they're connected with them. They think the whole church is bad. And now all of a sudden, their whole life is spiritually in ruins because they connected with somebody that divided their life. That's why I always tell you, once you find a place where God is blessing you and giving you favor and rewarding you, I don't care if you got to get there on a surfboard or a skateboard. If God is using that place to be a blessing to you, don't you let no devil in hell disconnect you from what God has called you to be blessed by. You got to watch out for this booger. This subtractor here, you got to watch. I, I mean, I ain't talking about specifically you. You know, I'm just saying, not brother. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. But you got to watch, you got to watch out for the people that, that are the minuses in your life. You got to watch out for them. One, one, one writer said, one writer said, be careful of your company for it's better to be alone than to be with a bunch of people that'll mess your life up. I heard one person say when I was growing up in the church, they said it's better to have four quarters than a hundred pennies. It's better to have four quarters than a hundred pennies. You got to be careful of the people you connect with. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh, I know I've done that a hundred times. Y'all give it up for these folk. Give it up for these folk. Y'all could just put it right there. Y'all could just put it right there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to give you something. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. First, this is one of my life verses. One of my, if, if you've been in this church long enough, you heard me quote this verse at least 5,454 million times. I live by this verse. One of the first verses I learned when I got saved at the age of 16. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good character. 
The people you run with can destroy your whole character. Not only can they destroy your character, if you're not careful, they'll destroy your reputation. I say this too as well. If you got a good reputation, you want to keep it because once you get a bad reputation, it's hard to change it. Bad company corrupts good character. Have you ever seen people that's just really good, you know, then they go off to college and they come back, and you're like, what in the world has happened to them? It's the people they got connected to. It's the people they got surrounded by. If you're a young person here, you're getting ready to go to college, and you're going to go to college, let me tell you something. I want to tell you something. The devil has entrapments of people on college campuses. You hear me, Kamaya? Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? All right, all right. Just make sure y'all following along. You want to make sure. You want to make sure that you connect with the right people. Tell your neighbor, connect with the right people. It is so important that we connect with the right people because if not, the enemy uses people that will entrap you. You want to know? That's what happened to the prodigal son. Luke 15, prodigal son, he would have never ended up in the hog pen if he never would have connected with that person. The Bible says got him to sell all his stuff and lose all his money. He would have never got in the hog pen. But the Bible says he connected with somebody of that region and of that community. Tell your neighbor, watch who you run with. I heard one rapper say, you got to cut it. You got to cut them off. Tell your neighbor, you got to cut them off. I'm anointing y'all to cut off toxic people. I'm anointing you to cut people out of your life that mean you no good. All the dividers, all the subtractors, you cut them today. Tell your neighbor, you cut them today. Let me give you, let me give you another good one. Proverbs 1 and 10. Listen to this. My child, if sinners entice you, turn your back on them. They may say, come and join us. Let's hide and kill someone. Now, if somebody say that to you and you go along with it, you just dumb. You just dumb. <laughs> let's hide and kill someone just for fun. Let's make ambush or let's ambush the innocent. Let's swallow them alive let the, like the grave. Let's swallow them whole like those who go down to the pit of death. Think of the great things we'll get. We'll fill our house with all of this stuff we take. Mm. Come, throw in your lot with us. We'll all share in the loot. It never works out like that. It never works out. Y'all, they'll never get to divide the stuff out. You know, it never works out. My child, don't go alone with them. Stay far away. Tell your neighbor, stay far away. Stay far away from their paths. They rush to commit evil deeds. They hurry to commit murder. Check this out. I like how Solomon writes. He said, if a bird sees a trap being set, even it, it knows to stay away. Any of y'all ever tried to trap a bird? A bird be sitting up in the, in the tree looking at you like, look at this dummy. It ain't going to work. But we as humans sometimes, the enemy will set a trap. We'll see the trap. Now we'll see the trap. We'll see somebody else done fell in it. <laughs> see that? We'll see somebody else done fell in it, and we'll go step in the same trap, thinking that we can, get, we can step in the trap and step out of it and not get caught. A bird is smarter than us, man. He said, if a bird sees a trap, they stay away. But those people set an ambush, set an ambush for themselves. They're trying to get themselves killed. Such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. Mm. It robs them of life. You got to watch out for that. Are y'all hearing me today? Let me, give you a couple, let me give you a couple more. Proverbs 13 and 20. Proverbs is a good book to read. It says, Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. You young people, let me help you out with something. This is something I learned. This is something I learned. This is something I learned. You need to sit by smart people in your class. <laughs> Quit sitting with them dummies in the back. You know, the ones that, that, that scoot all the way down in the seat, you know. And you young folk, don't let your kids do that. The ones that, that, that just, they, they don't want to be there. They're trying to find a way out of class. You know, you know what I learned? I learned to sit by Rusty Wade. I learned to sit by Trent. I learned to sit by Jared Billing, Valley Victorian and all them stuff. If they pass, I was going to pass. 
Now, don't ask me how I passed, but if they passed, I was going to pass. Give me that done. Hold on. Hold on. I can't see. Wait a minute. I, know I ain't telling y'all what to do. I'm just saying, man. Everybody in the back was flunking. I was passing. Oh, Tracy Parrish, wait a minute. Oh, you in this class with me? Girl, we going to sit by each other. All right. Oh, come sit back here with us. No, I'm good, man. I'm going up here. Associate, associate with fools and see what that gets you. It's, it's see, see what path that will lead you down. That's not just children. That's adults, too. That, that's, a, that's adults, too. Quit hanging out with these folks. See, sometimes our kids hang out with fools because they see who we hang out with. See, people are like elevators. Either they're going to take you up or they're going to take you down. And you want to make sure you're associating yourself with people that's going to take you up. Let me give you another one. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. This is one I really want you to get. I, want, I go into Proverbs 17, 17 next week. I want you to get this. Proverbs 27 and 5. It says this. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Let me help y'all out with something. I don't know if there's a part on your handout to fill it in or to write it. You need to put it in your notes or something. You need to get this. I'm going to help you out with something. You need people in your life who will tell you whenever you're wrong. I th I, when I woke up this morning, I thought that would be the part we really shout on. You need people in your life. The baby's saying amen to what I'm saying. You need people in your life who will tell you whenever you're wrong. Now, let me, let me also say this to you, is that you need to be open to people telling you you're wrong. Y'all know something I've learned? People who boast and people who say real loud, I just want you to tell me when I'm wrong. They don't. A lot of people, they don't want you to tell you that they're wrong. Because you tell them they're wrong, then they say stuff like, why you got to say it like that? You couldn't say it in love? You couldn't say it a different way? Wait, wait, wait a minute. When you're wrong, you know, you just need to be told you're wrong. Why we got to put sugar on it all the time? If, if you're out in the road, if you see a child out in the road and a semi is coming, you don't have time, sis. We don't have time to say, hey, baby, there's an 18-wheeler coming at you. Wait, wait, babe, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Baby, there's 18 wheeler coming at you from both sides. No, when you see a child about to get hit, baby, get out of that road. See, you need friends who would tell you you're wrong. People, see, and this is what I've learned. People will say things like, I want to be told I'm wrong, and when you tell them they have a problem with it, and they play the victim role. But you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm facing. You don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand what, how I grew up. I didn't ask you all that. I'm just telling you you jacked up. That the way you talk, the way you talk to your coworkers is dead wrong. You need people in your life. And let me tell you something. Quit just getting friends that agree with everything you do. You need friends in your life that say, girl, you might need to take that post off. Bruh, why are you fighting somebody on Facebook? Bruh, I don't know about that girl there. She's she, man, I don't know about that. Mm-mm. She, she fine now. She fine. And she fine. But I don't know about that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. You need people, you need people, you need people, you need people. You smell like marijuana. What, 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 you, what you been doing? 
You, you calling yourself a child of God and you getting how some other than Jesus? Oh, they're going to they gonna legalize it in Florida so I'm going to be all right. Well, just because something legal don't mean it's righteous. A lot of stuff legal. A lot of stuff legal. You need somebody to check it. Wait a minute. Why you had to go around the corner to answer that phone call? Why you got a different ring for that phone number than all the other rings? Girl, why you ain't wearing your wedding ring? Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. That's right. Thank you, baby. That can, you, you need people in your life that will check you. That will check you. I have friends in my life. I, I have pastor friends that check me. We call each other every day. My best friend, I tell you, I tell you all the time, if anything ever happens to me, call Pastor Roberson, call Pastor Cutter. These are my friends for life. These are my accountability partners. See, and the problem that a lot of us lack is we lack accountability. You know, you want to know something? I'm scared of people who have no friends. I'm scared, scared, scared. Because people that are alone, they will do anything. Because they have nobody to be accountable to to tell them you've done something wrong. And people that love darkness, they love aloneness. And when somebody checks them, they, 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 they buck against it like a, like a, like a bull. What, what are you doing telling me I'm wrong? And that's why I hate to say this in our African-American churches. A lot of times we can't keep people in our churches because anytime you check them about certain things, they have a problem with it. And it's not just churches. We change jobs every 10 days. We go from job to job. It's this person. It's the white man. It's the black man. It's the yellow man. It's the polka dot man. Because anytime somebody checks us, you've been late 30 days. Somebody need to say something to you. You don't know how to dress. You come in here wrinkled clothes every day and they check and put on the thing that you don't know how to come in here dress and you got a problem with it. I'm preaching real good. I'm going to get my own self an offering, man. I mean, this is really good. This is really good. Open rebuke is better than a kiss from, from an enemy. You know, I think some of the things we need to do with some of our friends, we need to ask them, how are you doing spiritually? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that with a lot of my friends today. How are you doing spiritually? How are you doing in your relationships? Do you got one girlfriend or do you got 10? Do you got a wife and a girlfriend? I mean, what's, what's, what's really going on? You need friends to ask you, girl, why there's no picture of you and your spouse on your social media? I done killed all the shout. We had, you know, we was marching around for freedom. We was, I'm getting my daughter back. I'm getting my son back. I'm getting my children back. We was marching. We ain't marching no more. I done killed all the shout in here. Friends, how many of us have them? Friends, ones we can depend on. You want to know something? Again, the Bible says open rebuke is better than hidden love. I've learned a lot of people when it comes to like rebuke and advice and people that say they want advice and people that say they want help and they want to be told they're wrong. A lot of people, they don't want advice. They want your attention. A lot of people, you will waste three hours telling them what to do and then after you haven't told them, they won't even do it. Y'all know what I done learned? I done learned to stop telling people or giving people advice that won't follow it. I done stopped it. I, I'm getting too old now. I'm 42. I'm 42 now. I don't waste time giving people advice, and I know they ain't going to take it. <clears throat> I, I give advice to a cold-blooded, 
cold-blooded, drunk crackhead that'll listen to what I got to say before a half-baked Christian that, it, that won't listen to nothing you tell them. You got to be open. You got to be open to constructive criticism. You need friends who tell you that. That's not right. That's, that's, girl, why are you still mad at your sister? You know that relationship between you and your daddy. Y'all need to get right. Girl, some of these girl nights out, you need to be spending with your husband. He's a man. Man, you know some of, bro, you know some of these hobbies you got. You need to be spending time with your lady. You need to do it. I'm preaching real good. A friend will do their best to give you the truth or at least try to give you the truth through hints. Try their best to help you out. Proverbs 27, 17, I fit to be done. It says, iron sharpeneth iron. At so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. People will either sharpen you or dull you. A lot of times we're trying to sharpen iron with cardboard. Can, I, can, 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 can y'all, who in here you give me five minutes? Who give me five minutes? I'll be done. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I'm up the hour already. I added all that up. I had to add this in the sign up. I added all that up. No, I'm serious. I'm, 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 I'm just wanna share, I just want to just give y'all a couple things. This, this is stuff you could just write down, but it'll help you out when it comes to friends. Something you need to understand, and, and young people and older people, you need to understand some friends are for a season, some are for a reason, and some are for treason. I'm going to say that again. Some are for a season, some are for a reason, and some are for treason. The enemy will many times, he will, he will, he will deliberately place a friend in your life that is supposed to stab you in the back. Sometimes I can't see it. Some, and this is a good thing. I told y'all, this is why I need my wife. Sometimes my wife would tell me, mm -mm, that's a snake right there. I'd be like, oh, they're they fine. They're they, they good. They, this is a friend. My wife like, that's a snake. I'd be like, oh, you're good. Five years later, I'd be like, yeah, you was right. Bit me. I couldn't, I didn't even know it. You know the story about a man that was walking, walking in the, in the snow, he went and found the snake, and um, snake was it was frozen and it was it was about to die, and um, he picked up the snake and he wanted to care the snake and bring it back to life and, and take care of it and bring it back to health. He took the snake and and he he picked it up and he started you know caring for it and gave it something to drink and, and put it in a blanket, took it took it home with him, got in the car, took it home with him. You know, and got in the house, and he, he's just he's just falling in love with this snake and everything. And then about three days later, he went to go feed the snake and go take care of the snake again, and the snake bit him. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what in the world is going on here? And he's like, wait a minute, I did all this for you. I took you out in the snow. I cared for you. I brought you back to life. I warmed you up. I, I, I helped you so you can live. The snake looked at him and said, you knew I was a snake when you got me. A snake is a snake no matter what. Some friends are for a season, some for a reason, some for treason. Some friends, that they're, they're only in your life to get you to a certain point. There are, people, there are people I've been connected with, I would never be connected to them ever again. But thank God, God sent them in my life. Even the people that stabbed you in the back, some of you wouldn't be able to pray the way you pray. You wouldn't have the relationship with God that you have now. If it had not been for the Judases that, that the enemy sent into your life, woo, you ought to thank God every now and then for the people that stabbed you in your back, that killed, tried to kill you and take you out. See, it is not so much oftentimes the favor of God and the blessings of God that make you praise. Sometimes it's the people that you look back and say, God, I thank you that she stabbed me in the back. I thank you that they tried to take me out. I thank you because if it wouldn't have been for them, you wouldn't have as strong of a foundation you got now. 
Let me give you a couple more. You need to stop disliking people because your friends don't like them. Some of you, you only dislike people because your friends don't like them, and you never even met them. I don't like them. Why you don't like them? Because girl Sarah told me this about them, this, that, and the other. And then when you meet them, you find out they're a great individual. It's just your friend crazy. I'm serious. And who in here you've ever found that? Somebody told you somebody was really bad, then you met the person. You're like, what in the world are you talking about? It's because they, they psychotic. They crazy. They ain't take their medicine. Okay? And not, not just your friends. Some of you, you don't like people because your family got history with people, and you don't like certain people because your family got bad history with people. Back in the 60s and the 70s, they, 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 took, they, they took their girlfriend in the third grade, and they still don't like somebody 53 years later. It was on camp out, and they took my girlfriend, and I still don't even like them. <laughs> you that petty and immature. Be careful of that. You, you, have y'all ever recognized, oh, I don't know if I could talk to y'all like the way the Holy Ghost downloading this stuff. See, I got automatic download in my head. You know, you check that thing on Apple and say automatic download. I got auto have y'all ever found out some people will not like or comment on some of your stuff publicly because they're afraid that the people they're connected to will start finding out that. <laughs> they won't even like your picture because they're afraid that their friends will see that you like or they like something of yours and they're afraid that they're going to be associated with you now and they're not going to like you anymore because you like their picture at the beach. Now, some of y'all can't say amen because you're that person. You like their picture? You commented on their picture? You, you shared their status? Yeah, I did. It was a good picture. I mean, I liked the editing. I mean, the, her picture, was, her hair was nice. I liked them, them Janet Jackson braids she had in the hair. You know, had really nice. It looked really good. Yeah, I ain't that petty. I ain't that petty. I'm going to stop with this one. I'm going to stop with this one. I'm a, I got 50 more I can share, but I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm stopping with this one because I got to get y'all out here to see power. I got to stop with this one. Be careful of connecting with people while you're broken. Be careful of connecting with people while you're broken. You need to understand, have you ever seen some people, they make the, the worst relationship decisions when somebody has died in their family? I mean, because you're vulnerable. It's, your, 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 your soul, your spirit is open at the most in two different times in your life. When a baby has been born in your family and when somebody has died in your family. You're most vulnerable then. Most vulnerable. And a lot of times, people, they connect with people while they're broken, and they connect with, with these people, and they connect with other people. And you have to, you have to be careful. You know, and, and, and that's why, let me help you out with something. This could, this could sound kind of controversial. It could, it could sound tough. If, if you go through, if, you, if you're going through a divorce and I'm going to use some other examples because I don't want you to think I'm just pointing this out. This is the first thing that comes to my mind. If you're going through a divorce, the last thing you want to do is hang out with other divorced people or people going through a divorce as well because they will tell you all the reasons why you should be mad. What you want to start doing is hanging around people with healthy healthy relationships, healthy connections, so that even if you end up getting a divorce, you'll be connected with people that, so that on your next relationship, it will be strong, it will be vibrant, it will be 
It will have a great foundation. That's what you want in your life. You want to be careful of connecting with people while you're broken. That's why one of the last things you need to do is that after you had a bad breakup, you, you, you don't went through three, three bad years with Jimmy, okay? You don't went through three bad years with Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy left you, and you, I mean, it was just, you know, you started off good. You know, you start off real good. You was posting pictures on Instagram. Like, we on our vacation, and, and um, this is my boo. And, you know, it, it's always funny how people start off strong. <laughs> then about 10, 10 months later, there's no more pictures. There's no more bae. There's no more boo. You know, all, it's just selfies. It's just a thousand selfies. But check this out. Check this out. You don't went through this bad relationship with Jimmy and you're broken. You will see every time that a person is broken, the enemy will always send a counterfeit. Always, always, always send a counterfeit. Always send a counterfeit. Always send a counterfeit. I'm going to say this and I'm done. I told the young people this story this morning in Sunday school class. I worked as a bank teller. It was started as farmers and dealers. It went to Mercantile Bank, then it went to CNB Bank. I worked through all those different changes. And I worked as a teller, started off working in bookkeeping, went to teller. But when I went to become a teller, I had to go to Gainesville to a workshop for counting money. And um, it was a workshop to help me to detect counterfeit money. Brother Cato, I had to learn how to um, detect counterfeit money. So we got in there. There's this room. It's a, it's a disclosed location, undisclosed location. It's in a secret place. It's thousands of dollars, it, millions, pro probably millions of dollars in the hundreds, twenties. Um, I think at the time they still, because they used to have $500 bills, $1,000 bills. They had all of these. They don't have it like that no more. They had all of these bills in this room. And so there was a stack, I promise you, back from the floor up to here, I had to count through. No machine, I had to do it by hand. And so I had to do this for about eight hours. And so they, they, they said to me, they said, you got to count all this money, you got to count all this money. So I'm counting all this money. And so about two or three hours in, I say to the person that's conducting the workshop, I say, when am I going to get to touch some counterfeit money? I said, when am I going to get to touch some fake, some counterfeit money? They said, don't worry about it, sir. Just keep counting. Just keep counting. Just keep counting. So I get back to counting. Two more hours. Just counting all this money. My, my fingers, I'm getting paper cuts on my fingers. I mean, it's just going on and on and on and on and on. And, and after about six hours of counting continuous money, I get almost down to the bottom of the deck, and then there's a piece of money that comes through. It feels different. I'm like, wait a minute, this, this feels different. This feels different from the other thousands of bills I've counted. They're like, you're correct, sir. That is a counterfeit bill. And he said, the reason why you was able to detect that that was a fake piece of money, that was a counterfeit bill, because you had been counting the real thing for so long. I got a message out of that that has never left my heart. After you done been with the real thing for so long, when something fake comes along, something in your spirit will say, this ain't even right. There's something not right about this. There's something not, not good about this. Zach, you can, put, you can play that, that organ track. There's something I learned. There's something I learned that after you done touched the real thing for so long, when the fate comes along, something in your spirit, you won't even have to say it out of your mouth. Something in your spirit will be, eh, eh, this ain't good. And sometimes if you don't say it, your mama will say it, your daddy will say it. I, I, don't, I don't know about them. Who their peoples? See, we don't, we don't have grandparents ask them kind of questions anymore. I used to have a grandma, you bring somebody to the house. It, it, that's what, Sister Betty know what I'm talking about. You bring somebody to the house. My grandma used to be like, who their peoples? I don't know him. I don't know him. Zach, you can play that. Is that back there? You can play that organ track. Something I've learned. 
It's after you touch the real thing when something fake comes along. I, I said, God, how is it that you want me to end this message today? On my way to church this morning, he said, I want you to do this. I want you to pray for people that they'll get a spirit of discernment. Of being able to know the real friends from the fake friends. I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for us. Did I lose? Oh, you got it? Okay. That's good. You can turn up just a little bit, Zach. That's good. You could just play that. You could play that organ talk track. That's good. If you touch it one time, it'll play. But this is this is this is what I. This is what I want you to understand. First of all, friends are important. Say that with me. Say friends are important. Say it again. Say friends are important. Say it one more time like the old school for the Holy Spirit. Say friends are important. Very important. I'm praying that you get the people that multiply and add to your life. You young people in here, I want to tell you something. Us older people would tell you a lot of us, we could be a whole lot further in life if it wasn't for the people we connected to. Some of us, it, money, relationships, all, you name it, we could have a whole lot more if it wasn't for some of the crazy people we connected ourselves to. I want to pray that we all get discernment as it pertains to friends and the value of friends. And I want to pray for us that God will help us in this area called friendships. You know, the Bible says in order for a man to have many friends, he must show himself to be friendly. Ask your neighbor, are you friendly? You didn't ask him. Ask him real good. Now, I know we, we get uncomfortable when we tell people to look at it. Some of y'all, you say, if he's tell me to look at my neighbor one more time, I know something. I'm just doing this because I love you and you love your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, are you friendly? Now, I didn't ask you, are you frisky and are you, you know, flirtatious? <laughs> it's a big difference between the two. You know, some people, they think they're friendly. They're just flirtatious. They like hugging you and touching you, and giving you bear hugs and stuff. Friends that help you when you're down. Friends will help to bring spiritual focus to your life. Again, a homeless man is not a man who ran out of money. He's a man who ran out of friends. When you, when you drive, you pass by these interstates and these places under these bridges, it's not that they ran out of money. They ran out of friends. Everybody in this room, we ought, to have a, we ought to have a room in our house just in case somebody gets that far down that they can come stay with us. All of us, we should learn the value of friendships. Grab your neighbor by the hand. We're going to pray. Ooh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is what I want y'all to do. Just watch where you're at. We're going to do this for a minute. I want us to take about 60 seconds. I want you to pray for your brother, your sister that you're in, connected to right now. Pray that God will bless them spiritually. Pray that God will bless their marriage. Pray that God will bless their children. Pray that God, if it's a young person if you're connected to, pray God to bless them in school. Pray for scholarships. Pray for favor. Pray for the right people to be in their life. I want you to pray. Let's take this time. I want you to pray now. Pray, people of God. Pray for them now. Come on, open. Now, I ain't tell you to pray in your mind. I want you to pray with your mouth. Pray for them right now. Pray for them. The devil is trying to attack them. I want you to pray for them now. Pray for them now. Pray for them like you're praying for your baby. Like the life support of your baby is at risk. I want you to pray for them now. Pray for them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! Holy Spirit, we invite you to come into their lives now. Holy Spirit, have your way right now. 
God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the right friends in our life. Put in the right friends and take out the wrong ones. Ooh, God, put the right spiritual people in our lives, people that will make us feel uncomfortable when we're around them, people that are prophesying to our lives, people that's got a word for the day for our lives, people that know how to worship and know how to praise. Ooh, God, put the right people in our lives. Oh, God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Now everyone in here, lift your hands right now. I want to pray for us. Woo! I'm praying for a spirit of discernment over each and every one of your lives. In the same way while we was praying, I, I see in the spirit in the same way that I was counting that money. And after I had touched the real thing, when I touched something fake, I detected it. I'm praying that God will give you the discernment to know what's fake and what's real. That God will give you the discernment to know what's phony and what's real. I pray that God will give you that discernment now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory. Say this out of your mouth. Say, God, give me a spirit of discernment to know the fake from the real. Say it again. Say, God, give me a spirit of discernment to know the fake from the real. Now say, God, pray, I pray that you take all of the wrong friends out of my life. Say it again. Say, God, I pray that you take all of the wrong friends out of my life. Put all the right friends into my life. Say it again with authority. Say, put all the right friends in my life. I thank you for this right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise right now. Come on, give God praise right now. Come on, give God praise right now. Now, while we're standing, don't be seated just yet. While we're standing, I'm preaching about friends, but I want to tell you something. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're in this room and you don't, ooh, 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 hey, that boy Shande, if you don't know this friend, we should sing a song. Say, oh. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needless. Oh, what, we often forfeit. Oh, what. What, 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 I'm telling you, if you don't know this friend, this friend name is Jesus. The Bible says, what man of love that a friend will lay down his, a man will lay down his life for his friend. You, you won't get your friends to do that. If you're here and you're not saved, there's a friend sitting at this altar. I'm not talking about me. There's a friend standing at this altar. He's got pierced side, he's got pierced hands, he's got a pierced foot. He died for you 2,000 years ago. He's waiting for you to receive him. And I love to pray with you. I love to pray for you. I'm calling you now to come to this friend. Calling you now to give your life to him. I don't care what you've been in, what you've been through, what you've been involved in. There is a friend his name is Jesus that you can receive. I'm giving that opportunity now. I'm going to give somebody 10 seconds and I'm going to move on to receive the greatest friend that you can receive. This might be your opportunity. You might be thinking about salvation. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to say yes to this friend in Jesus' name. Well, listen, listen, if there's none, let's give the Lord a praise for this friend. Come on, give praise for Jesus, the greatest friend that you can ever 
experience in your life. Before you be seated, I want you to do this. I know this gets on your nerves, but I'm going to make you do it till you get tired of it. I want you to go tell five people that I'm your friend. Not five people you're standing beside, but find five people and tell them I'm your friend. 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 I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what they think about you. I'm your friend. I don't care how they lied about you. I know you got some issues. I know you got some problems with dogs, man. We're pals, man. You're my buddy. You're my sister. We're going to stick together. Either I'm going to bury you or you're going to bury me. We're together for life, man. Amen. We're friends. Friends, how many of us have them? Yeah. Friends, one we can, ones we can depend yeah. on. Friends, how many of us have them? Woo. Friends. Yes. Before we go any further. Thank you for being a friend. Come on, somebody give God praise one more time. Listen, y'all be seated. We're going to, let's prepare our hearts to give. We're going to give and we're going to be out of here. This is way longer than I anticipated being, but God has spoken to our hearts. Anybody get something today? Anybody hear God say something to your life today?